All right, hello everyone. Um, uh, I wanted to go over a brief tutorial here on how to set up your grid for specific tournament shots. So let's say, for instance, um, I'm playing hole nine or hole two, whatever it is, and I'm doing something that's not, you know, a full curl or a full power shot. And it's just kind of somewhere in the middle. So what do you do? And um, the first thing that I do, um, let me go to the video real quick, is here you're going to see I use a turkey. This is in Masters. And um, what I ended up doing on this shot was basically like a partial. So um, for the first thing that I'll do is I'll make sure, you know, the zoom is on a full on a full page like this and then um, I'll get to you know where I'm about to curl like this and then I'll pause it and take a screenshot so after I have that screenshot for instance let me come into the screenshot the next thing that I'll do is go to the golf clash notebook and um, I have these extra horizontal and vertical lines here and let me just get the wind assist on real quick so I can see them. Um, the first thing that I'll do is just try to um, position it in kind of an estimation. You know, I'm kind of thinking like somewhere like here, maybe power wise, just somewhere over there. Let me get my pen out real quick. It's a little bit easier for me to do this than with my finger. So when I'm scrolling, what just happened? This froze real quick. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, in terms of the height, maybe somewhere around here. Let me just extend this over here and kind of get it in position. Now the next thing that I'll start to do is just view this picture in full and then I'll just kind of see how it, so this one needs to come up and this needs to go over about a quarter inch so um, so all I need to do is kind of shift this positioning up somewhere up in here and this one needs to come over about a quarter inch or so as well so I'm kind of thinking somewhere in the neighborhood of there. Yeah. Ended up moving this one. But let's just see what this looks like. Now you can see that I'm starting to get it. So I'm getting it boxed in here. And I just need to move this one up maybe about another eighth. And that should do it. So the positioning on this, it's almost going to be touching this line, this other line that I use for uh, grid hair. I'm thinking maybe right there. And you can see that basically encloses the ball. Now the one thing that you do want to um, worry about is the wind. So there you can see it's at 7.9. Um, what if you know, um, the, the biggest thing to worry about, especially in mass or an expert, what if you know your wind goes from 7 to 10 for instance, in some kind of range um, when you're doing these shots. So you'll need to scale accordingly. So for instance, if I typically, um, you know, had a 7.9 here, then I'll do this. But let's just say the wind was 9.6, for instance, instead. So what I'll do is I'll need to use less power. So maybe I'll just move it up an eighth of an inch or maybe just slightly above the other horizontal line that you see right here you know moving that up and I'll just keep the positioning the vertical positioning but I'll switch the horizontal positioning and you know the opposites is true what if I what if my winds only 6.9 for instance well then I'm gonna need a little bit more power to replicate that however the vertical positioning here is pretty perfect so I can just kind of keep this vertical positioning um, and this one's going to be good to go. 
And the only thing I can do is, you know, I can bring this up so it's a little bit less annoying. Um, and then I can toggle them on and off as necessary as well. So there you can see I'll toggle them um, and I can bring them back. So when I play hole nine, I can basically just pull this box out kind of just for hole nine. And you'll see that it just kind of encapsulates the ball and I can just do this positioning time and time again because you can see that I'm not in max power and I'm also not in max curl. So I can actually, you know, still curl more towards the right. And the reason that I curl this much on nine is because my turkey ball only has two side spin. So I have to do a little bit extra curl than I would with a kingmaker. So once you have your ball combination and spin figured out and you're in the fairway where you want to shot replicate, then you'll start to work in on boxing this in. Um, alternatively, you don't need to use this method, but you can if you want for one shot. So alternatively, what I can do, well, well um, the next thing that I can do is I can just use my curl grid line as well. And if I want to use that secondary line, the horizontal, I can do that. So let's take a look. Here's, here's this grid. Um, you know, let me bring back in that um, horizontal line, um, which is optional for you to use. But you'll see that it just basically set it. It'll help you set the height. And look at this coincidence. Um, this line here, which represents 50 curl, is actually right on the edge. So that just kind of worked out. However, let's say it wasn't and you saw a quarter inch gap or an eighth inch gap, then you could just basically estimate and say, oh, I'll just need to go a quarter inch or an eighth to the right or left of that um, in order to get to that exact same spot on the screen. Um, you'll just kind of, you know, you, you just want to cr quick ref reference this page before you actually go to shoot. If there was, you know, something that needed changed, you know, for instance, you know, the ball was more over here um, towards the edge a little bit differently, um, then you just have to, you know, basically just say, oh, I have to shift it, you know, from the second line, I'll just shift it just, you know, just that a little bit that I might need to go. But it actually looks like this one's actually pretty perfect. So when we're actually looking at how much curl I have applied here, so this line over here represents 100. I, I calibrated these to be basically exact. So if this is 100, this is 75. Right now I'm using we're at about 80 to 82-ish curl, somewhere in that neighborhood. So 80 to 82 curl. Um, just by the looks of this picture, because you can see 75s here in the center of the ball, which is probably right where you see this white dot. It's pretty close to this white dot, and you can see that it's just a little bit more than 75, um, and definitely, you know, well less than 100. You can see that it's definitely more towards the 75, so that's why I'm guessing probably around like 82, maybe 83, somewhere in there for how much I'm actually curling for this shot. So you just need to make sure that your driver attribute has that much curl to even be able to you know, replicate my shot, for instance. So Apocalypse, for example, it's a perfect example of a club that you'll be able to kind of replicate this a little bit because it has good curl attribute. So hopefully, you know, one of those two methods you find useful. Um, you know, you can use a combination of both. Uh, for the most part, you know, I might use the curling grid lines. However, for a very shot specific, um, what's nice about this is, you know, in tour play, when you don't have time to set all that um, additional lines up to kind of box your shot in, um, this is going to be much more practical on the fly for you to use. And you can see, you know, the way that I have mine calibrated, all these lines are kind of exactly 25, 50, 75, and 100. And if you need to see that video, look up Golf Clash um, Android Notebook app. Um, you can search my name. Um, it's also in, and it's Notebook app um, update 0.7.0. .0. So that's the update that, 
basically shows you how to get the uh, those lines calibrated in case you still need to do that. Um, so once you have those grid lines calibrated um, to where you want on your screen, like the way that I did it, which is you know, 25, 50, 75, 100, um, then you should be able to you know, use that, especially in tour play, to just kind of get a better estimation and just make sure that you're always remembering that it's to the center of the ball in this um, layout that I have here. So um, good luck. Hopefully that helps you guys. Um, let me know how it goes. You know, regardless if you're in rookie, pro, expert, master, um, you should be able to use these tips uh, for, you know, and when looking at this tournament, holes two and nine are perfect candidates for you to do something like this. So um, hope this helped, guys, and um, good luck out there. Let me know how it goes.